Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. And I'm going to ask James to pull that up and put that up on the screen. Micah chapter 3 and verse 8. But truly, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgression, which is prophecy, and to Israel his sin, also prophecy. But I want to ask if anybody has a slightly different translation than that in their Bibles. There are a few different variations. I will tell you this. None of them accurately, re I mean, really accurately describe what it says in the Hebrew. So take a look real quick. I'm going to try and fix my, my Talit here for a second. Get out your Bibles and take a look and see if you've got a different translation. All right, who has a different translation? What do you got, Mark? To declare of Yaakov's crime. What about the, the power and the spirit? What does it say there? By the spirit of the Lord. Okay, anyone else? You have what? Judgment instead of justice? Okay. I want, I want to focus on that passage with uh, the portion there with the spirit. What it says is this. Anochi, I, maleti, I am filled, or I am full of, I am full of, koach, power, or strength. Et ruach adunai. Now, if the words on the screen are correct there should be a connecting word by with that which something like that it's not there it's just not there truly I am full of power comma the spirit of the Lord the implication here is that the Spirit of the Lord is the power Micah is filled with. There's no other connecting word there to tell us otherwise. That's amazing. That right here, it shows us that when we are filled with the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, however you want to phrase it, we have power. And it's not a New Testament thing. It's a God thing. So what about the New Testament? Well, the, the place that we find the Holy Spirit, this term the Holy Spirit, more than any place else, is in the book of Acts. Now, why would you think that? What's that? Pentecost. Well, yeah, it happened at Pentecost, and that's where we read it, in the book of Acts. All of the Acts of the Apostles, which is really the name of this book, were done by the power of the Spirit. And so we would think that the term the Holy Spirit would be found most there. And that's correct. In fact, there are three times more appearances of the term Holy Spirit in the book of Acts than in any other single book of the entire scripture. There are 40 appearances of the term Holy Spirit just in the book of Acts. The next one behind that is the book of Luke in which there are only 13 appearances. But I want to tell you this. Even though the terms may change between Spirit of God, Spirit of the Lord, and the Holy Spirit, the way He functions has remained the same. Relational. 
We talk, we talk a lot about the fact that God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if that's the case, then Yeshua, the Son, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And if that is the case, then the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Which means that the way that He operated then is going to be the same way that He operates now, relationally. Every time we see the term the Holy Spirit in the New Testament, it's still relational. We are filled. We have received. We have been given. And in a couple of cases, we resist. But resistance is still relational. And when you are in relationship with the Holy Spirit, things happen. What do we see in the New Testament? Same things power acts chapter 1 verse 8 before the holy spirit is given to the world yeshua himself says you y'all wait here and you will receive power when the holy spirit comes that's not new and again in romans chapter 15 and verse 13 paul says you have power through the holy spirit what else do you get well, now, it's not just wisdom we get, but direct guidance. We get guidance. How do we see that in the scriptures? We see it by the word led. L-E-D, led. We get led by the Spirit. Romans chapter 8 and verse 14 says it clearly. Also in Galatians chapter 5 and verse 18, when you are led by the Spirit, that means the Spirit is going to take an active part in your life to lead you or guide you, just like he did with Sonny in our video clip. When he spoke to Sonny and, and the Spirit led him to Pastor Charles. The Spirit will take an active role in your life when you are in relationship with Him. And then, of course, we also get gifts. Everybody likes gifts, right? Everybody likes gifts. But let's say you get a gift, and you get a gift, and then you open your gift, and you open your gift, and you happen to like the gift that she got better than the gift you got, and you happen to like the gift that he got better than the gift that you got, but you can't switch. Wow! What a dynamic. Why would God want to do that? Well, I'll tell you what, you can ask him when you get there because that's exactly what he does. To some, he gives one gift. To others, he gives another gift. To others, he gives another gift. And you know what? The gift you got is meant to bless everybody else in this room. And the gift that you got is also meant to bless everybody in this room. And you know what happens when you use your gift and you use your gift and you use your gift, whether you like it or not, we all get blessed. And that's what God's trying to do. I got my water. <laughs> Pardon me for a minute. That was two weeks in a row. <laughs> so where, like, this is like where in the world is Carmen San Diego? Where did the Holy Spirit go? Where did he go? Why do some people think he's not around anymore? Why do some people think that the gifts don't exist anymore? What, where, where in the world is the Holy Spirit? Where did he go? He is still here. He's right here. But you've got to be in relationship with him. You've got to have that relationship. See, the Holy Spirit...